So could some wireframing tips be helpful? Possibly, yeah. I mean, young, you get, again, they actually build the wireframes, I don't. Mm -hmm. so. so I think it would be helpful just to watch and see kind of how does a designer kind of approach a, a wireframing process? Mm -hmm. And you're talking from a kind of a philosophical point of view or very like step-by-step, -step, like to actually designing the interface kind of point of view? Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like Bolsonaro is so simple to use. I think the actual clicking is not, like we're good on that. I think mm. more so kind of bigger level, higher level, like philosophical, like how do you approach this? Um, yeah, from that level. Okay, um, so I have some, we have a lot of resources on our, um, Wireframing Academy kind of training website that I will maybe walk through with you and then maybe we can dive into some specific wireframing. Um, you can see my screen. Um, so here's one that we wrote recently about how to start a wireframing project. And there's a really good technique that I like here that's actually taken from some of these live wireframing sessions where instead of diving right into the UI design, um, you really start by being a little bit more high level and knowing what problem that you want to solve and then who you're going to be solving it for. So instead of diving into the UI design, start by, you can start by writing down um, some, both some text and then also kind of some diagrams about maybe how things flow together. So, um, you know, this uh, suggests writing down uh, the who will be using it, what their goal is, and what actions or operations they want to perform. And that can actually be done, um, you know, just in text, you know, so I can just say, who is it for? You know, what do they want to do? And then, you know, what is their overall goal? Or you can phrase this as, you know, what is their, what would make them happy at the end? You know, um, you know, uh, you know, it could be you no, know, errors it could be you know it was fast you know what are kind of what are some metrics you know what do they want to do um you know, you know maybe it's complete the form but maybe it's something more specific um and then who could be you know maybe these are your uh, admin users or, or something like that and kind of tied into some of your knowledge about that so that when you're designing um you can you can go back to this. This is something that we do. Um, you can also use um, this sitemap tool if you want to do some some layout. You know, so this could be, you know, you would know these better. But page one, and then maybe you want to have some uh, if then scenarios. Um, you know, and I'm just kind of thinking, you know, thinking out loud a little bit here, um, where you could I could envision a whole sitemap of seeing the the form or the workflow at a high level before you begin designing so that once you're into the screen level um you know you're not trying to wrap your you're try not trying to visualize it because you already have um you can also do this with just having um some simple shapes that um you know even you can create kind of like a a flow chart if you want and have some shapes for um that represent decision branches or or other um, you know other sorts of things like that. If if that would help you as kind of a, a starting point um, to visualize things before you start actually start the designing. Um, so that's one suggestion. And then you know, is uh, I mean, would you like any tips on how to design forms in Balsamic? Or you said that you're good with that. Um, one thing that I do sometimes is instead of just doing one label after another, and then, um, you know, kind of duplicating them on down, I might just do a list in order to get the alignment right. And then I will turn the, the border off on the list so that this could be label one, label two, label three and then I can also space these out more if I want to do that um, and then um, you know this could be my text input field um, 
and so if I just want the alignment to be a little bit easier, and then say if one of these is a is a text box, for example, I'll space this out. There's also something that maybe you don't know about that um, we added recently, which is you can transform controls to one. So if you say, oh, instead of a text uh, input field, this should be a text area, or this should be a, a drop down. You can change it to that, um, or maybe now this is a um, uh, text area, and that's actually going to be, you know, going to be a bigger field. I'm going to put this one here, um, and then, uh, you know, put this here. It also depends kind of on the complexity of your forms. I don't know, um, you know, I have done some work actually for uh, EHR systems, um, but I don't. You know, without knowing yours, I don't know really how. You know, designing a simple sign-up form it may be a lot different than the types of things that you um, that you deal with. Um, there's also um, we do have an article on um, on forms here, so we have some um, basic rules about how to design forms, uh, including spacing you know, alignment, where to put the labels, um, whether to use com uh, col multiple columns, where to put your buttons, um, and things like that. And there's a lot of guidelines out there. There's also entire books um, about form design. Um, there's a, a classic um, a book about uh, designing web forms, um, which is really good. Um, also, I just today, um, uh, I learned about a, an upcoming class on. Oh yeah, so here's a here's another book that, about form design patterns, and this guy is actually going to be doing a workshop all about form design at an upcoming conference. Um, so you know, not to. Uh, push you uh, elsewhere, but um, there's a, a lot of people who have written a lot on form designs, uh, form design, and there's a lot of step-by-step -step things for how to design all different form um, use cases, um, for example, um, as well as some of the articles that we've written and some of the templates that we have. Um, so if you go to wireframes to go, if you go to this more controls button, for example, you can type in forms, and here are some examples that you can import for form fields with label labels. So I can import these into a project. Now I can go to my symbols, and I have, you know, I have a date picker here. Uh, I have a multi-select option here. Um, you know, here's a text um, uh, area with a label on top, and so these are these kind of custom symbols um so you don't have to recreate the, the, these from scratch and then nice. if you edit them can we create our own libraries for those things yes you can so um and then the nice thing about that is that when you update them once they'll update everywhere so i can now go to i can view my symbols and i can view that each of these um you know here's all of them and um if i wanted to do say I wanted to make this maybe um, right aligned or something like that. Um, and then if I add that now, it's going to be updated everywhere. So that could be a good thing to do um, to make your work in Balsamic easier. Just do kind of an audit or an inventory of all of your um, design projects and take maybe and kind of standardize some of these and take some of your favorites and um, create them as these symbols and then when you're um, creating your wireframe, you can go back to, you can go to the, your um, this symbols library and there will be all the controls and the components that you use the way that you use them so that you're not um, creating them from scratch. And if you want to do any, and you can even name them certain things. Sometimes people name them according to either like the, uh, the name in the code, you know, if it uses a certain class name or if there's something that connects it to uh, how it's implemented in the code, then that can make it easier to develop too. So 
you know, when, when you click on it, you know, it will have the, the name of the widget that you use and the component that you use in your code too. So that would probably be a good, a good time saver. Um, and then again, like I said, when you update them once, they'll update everywhere. I mean, also, if you have some things that you wanted to say, show me or, or, or some kind of examples, either maybe of sites or forms that you'd like, or if you want me to walk through the process of how I might design or redesign a form or something like that, we can do that um, as well. And if I went fast and you want me to go back through any of that, I'd be happy to. Do you find people using wireframes for process mapping, like in the way that you would use Visio? Um, or not really? Not if it's like, if that itself is the, the, the entirety of the task. So if you're, if all you're doing is creating, um, uh, you know, flow charts, then, you know, Balsamic is, is not the best tool. But what I found is that it's useful to, it's often useful to create a visualization or some kind of diagram um, as kind of a step before the wireframing. And so that's why Balsamic has these kind of generic shape controls and, uh, and arrows and you know, connectors and things like that, because sometimes it's nice to have all of those things all together. So um, you certainly can create any kind of diagram um, or, or visualization inside Balsamic, um, especially if it's a tool that you're comfortable with and you're using already. Um, you can bring in images and, you know, there's different coloring options and things like that. If you wanted to use it as kind of a, a diagramming or a drawing tool, it can certainly do that. Um, again, especially if it's, if it's a tool that you're already using and comfortable with. Mm -hmm. 